It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, I wanted to bring Norm back on the end of the day with Ray today because he had his webinar on Thursday talking about e-commerce. It was part of the Lemonade series. You know, we had Wes McCarter talking about data uh, three weeks back. Two weeks ago, we had Aaron Dick from Clover talking about marketing strategies. And last Thursday, we had none other than Norm talking about e-commerce. And e-commerce, obviously, a critical component to the future of not just the imaging channel, but to most resellers. Norm, how are you doing, man? I'm great, Ray. Thanks for attending the webinar. I, I couldn't believe that when we did the final numbers and looked at it, over 450 people uh, sat in on one of the webinars that we've done. Man, that's amazing. 450 people. 450 people, and there, you know, a lot of those were from the imaging channel, obviously, but we had people from IT services. We even had some office products resellers on there. It's fantastic that the industry is taking this serious. But, you know, I wanted to ask you a question because I read an article recently where the automotive industry was super excited for the fact that they had e-commerce platforms through this COVID crisis because it enabled them to continue to do business. But, Norm, what do you believe was the catalyst which forced all the automakers around the country, all those dealerships to have an e-commerce platform? Yeah, they eventually had to react to the success of Tesla, didn't they? Bingo. And, I, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this pandemic and I'm asking myself, is it going to be the pandemic that's the catalyst to wake up the industry to finally adopt e-commerce? Or is it going to be a company like Tech Data, which I think had record sales, or a company like CDW, which had record sales? And what I don't want to happen, and I'm going to fight like hard so it doesn't happen, and some people might not like the fighting, but I'm going to do it. But I want to fight like hard because I don't want e-commerce to be a talk track like managed print services was for the SMB space for the last four or five years. All talk, no action. And the reason is because those customers wanted to buy transactionally. So uh, here's another question for Norm. How many hundreds of millions of dollars did the Imaging Channel lose <laughs> because they weren't able to sell customers in a transactional environment called e-commerce over the last 90 days? Oh, I'd have to say tens of millions to hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. And the evidence would be would be throughout the COVID crisis, look at the numbers that you'll see quarter end numbers from tech data, from CDW, from Amazon, how much technology was immediately, transactional technology mm -hmm. was put through those channels in the months of uh, March and April. Astounding. Well, I would say this to all the dealers, because you know, this is just me and Norm talking, of course we're pro e-commerce, but I, I really suggest all the dealers go to their end users, and ask them, what did they buy through the COVID online? Just ask them, what are some of the products and services that you obtained through a digital platform where you had no interaction with a human? And I think that it could be very surprising to them. We actually went through that in the, the webinar. If somebody wants a copy of mm -hmm. it, they can just, uh, you know, a message array, and I'm sure we'll get a, a version out to them. But, you know, the, in, in simple terms, when people got sent home, those home office workers needed solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have needed a printer, a laptop, a computer, a desk, a chair, telephone, all kinds of things that are technology related. Imagine the IT person or the, the financial folks are purchasing people trying to outfit dozens of employees in their organization. Uh, some of our resellers had this and were successful. If you had uh, an option for people to just, just in one foul swoop, go to a website and click a button that was a, home office product uh, array that, that, their, that their employees could use, and they could do that very quickly, that was incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's sort of the idea that if you wanted to help those customers, you had to have those solutions. Now that ship has sailed, but what hasn't sailed is throughout COVID, we've had a record two months of number of new resellers that have come on board and used the system because they realize they can't touch their customers unless they have a digital presence. Well, I've got to tell you, you know, I use Shopify. You set that up for me, but we have a Shopify website for, you know, end of the day with Ray.com. And, you know, they actually, when, when they furloughed their people or sent their people home, they didn't furlough, they kept them on, sent them home. But they actually told them all that they could go and buy whatever they want up to a thousand dollars online. And I think, you know, so the question is how many of our, you know, dealer customers did things like that? You know, they didn't have time to screw with it. Hey, everybody just run home and do whatever you need. Just go buy. We're going to expense it. And in the meantime, we're trying to, you know, get everybody to do a contract with us. So I, I hopefully, you know, they listened to your webinar. It was great information. You, you know, you talked about the leasing component. You talked about a lot of things that 
are very challenging to the status quo. <laughs> you know, talking about buying a copy with a charge card is not something the imaging channel for the most part wants to hear, but that's a, that's a big loss of revenue if, if they're doing it through Amazon or tech data. Yeah, I think it's these changes, let's be honest, these changes are not going to be easy. However, the alternative, you know, if you're a dealership and you've decided and you can see through this that we're going to go back to business as usual, uh, I can't see it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how how all of the you know partners that you have, all of the the end user customers that needed solutions and will continue to look for solutions, but you're going to continue. Imagine the first salesperson that walks through the door, Ray, mm -hmm. uh, when when they're allowed out through the door, trying to upgrade a copier. Uh, how that's going to be received by and large in the customer base. I think for the sake of the employees and for the sake of your customers, we're going to need a new met, uh, method to do business and a new message, a positive message as to how you can help them and yep. continue to help them and be relevant. Well, they're going to have to form new alliances. You know, I did the video the other last week where I was talking a little bit about the restaurant and the app versus printing off a bunch of menus. And it's, you know, it's those types of services, that digitalization process for these end users. And that, you know, e-commerce obviously is just part of that. I mean, you might have dealers that understand e-commerce is so valuable that they help their end users develop e-commerce, you know, and, and, you know, go through you to help them with that too. It's not just about them, you know. How many of their end users are looking at e-commerce? Ray, that happens frequently, more, <laughs> way more than you think that, that the customers, once they're introduced to the e-commerce solution by the reseller, the customer actually says, who built your website? That's really cool. Can, yeah. we, can they help us? Yeah. Now, we're obviously specialized in the print imaging and technology channel. That's mm -hmm. what we do. That's all we've done and we're focused on for the last you know, uh, five or six years. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, we refer those to partners that can help build something like it. Well, let me ask you a question, Norm. Are you going to have any more webinars or do you need to have any more educational things? What's the feedback you're getting from the dealer community? Well, again, as I said, we've been busy, absolutely, and had, had a record couple of months. Um, I, I think, I, 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 in a way, I'm surprised that it's, well, it's, it's been a record month for us. I still look and say, you know, if there's 1,500 or 2,000 resellers, dealers in, in North America, um, I'm surprised I wasn't avalanched, like a mm -hmm. tsunami hit me, uh, because I look around our community and I, and I see that every business that I know of has moved from an analog business to, to one, of, if they're still doing anything today, it's digital. Mm -hmm. So I kind of looked and said, I don't understand why every one of those 1,500 resellers haven't got up and said, what is our process going to be moving forward? So I, I'm, I know not everybody's going to. Because uh, mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a lot of challenges in the industry, but I I think that if they're continuing to follow a path of managed print services is the way forward. Yeah. Uh, you know, as somebody that started Printfully 20 years ago, again, yeah, an important part of my message last week was was for small businesses up and down the street, less than 100 people, managed print services is dead. It's, it has been dead for a long time. It's not a, you know, here's the reality. I think a lot of the folks in our industry just like the word print so much. And I, there's nothing wrong with calling it, you know, managed e-commerce print. I don't just put print in there somewhere, put print head of e-commerce, however you want to do it, print e-commerce. But the fact of the matter is if you're managing to get money from end users for printers and supplies and some kind of service, it's you're managing it. So you got to manage it with the realities of the marketplace. And I, you know, I'm not, I, I, I just hope, and I, and I think because you had some good uh, response, not near as much as I want, but, you know, I think that the channel finally realizes that they've had their Tesla moment, if you will. And I think that hopefully they'll pay attention to the realities that they have to build an e-commerce platform. Because if we could do a car on e-commerce, we could sure do an A4 copy machine. I mean, hell, Xerox is selling A3s. Through hey, I, I, and, I, and I don't think it's just print, it, it, but when you start getting people to your website, and this is the, you know, the inherent issue with managed print services, that you, when you have an MPS contract, you prevent customers from going to your website. You prevent customers from understanding all the various mm -hmm. products that you may be able to set products and services to sell to them. So that's why you want to bring people to that website. This was worse than a Tesla moment. Yeah. Tesla at least was something that gradually happened to them as their market share came yeah. up. This was a 
was a, a Mike Tyson hammer punch. <laughs> yeah, that, pretty much. You, you know, as, they, as the line says, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, mm -hmm. as Mike Tyson says. We all had a plan. We all had a strategy. Now, however, we, how are we reacting to it? Well, you know, hopefully they got the message and, you know, we're, we're starting to break out a little bit down here in America. I think you guys are kind of close by us, but, you know, hopefully by we get into June, we're, we're out in the marketplace more, but we still have some challenges ahead of us. And, you know, I'm not one to sugarcoat stuff because I want people to take that fear and actually make them do something with it. But, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting that we had 450 people on a webinar series. That's fantastic. It's exciting that the channel you know, understands the importance of the future by contacting you. And so is there anything you want to end with before we wrap this up? Ray, I, I've been impressed by your message from the get-go, uh, which is status quo more than ever. And so you can, you know, is, is absolutely the enemy. Um, the good news now is that we know that status quo is just simply not the way forward. It must be changed. Absolutely not. And so for that, I'm going to end it like I always do. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.